A triathlon is an endurance multi-sport race consisting of swimming, cycling, and running over various distances. Triathletes compete for the fastest overall completion time, racing each segment sequentially with the time transition between the disciplines included. Although triathlon isn't an extreme sport, it is recommended for professional athletes only. These races are open to everyone and not unachievable by any means. However, a history in athletics is said to make the race easier. While triathlons consist of three disciplines, namely running, cycling, and swimming, this article focuses on triathlon swimming only. The swim will take place in a swimming pool or open water, such such as a lake or sea. The swim start will be in waves, with groupings based on your predicted swim time or age. This might be intimidating for someone who is taking part for the first time, but the more you train for this event, the more prepared you will feel. So now, let's get into the video. Transition is the fourth discipline in triathlon for those at the top of the sport. However, for many people, the transition is simply where all their swim to bike and bike to run kits are kept during the race. The distance an athlete needs to cover for a triathlon varies from event to event. The novice swim distance is less than 750 meters and the iron level distance goes up to 3,800 meters. Triathlon clubs are a great way to meet other triathletes and coaches, get involved in a regular training program, or sign up for a skills development course. Olympic Triathlons involve a 1.5 kilometer swim, a 40 kilometer bike ride, and a 10 kilometer run. In Ironman triathlons, the swimming portion can be as long as 3.9 kilometers, followed by up to a 180 kilometer bike ride and a 42.2 kilometer run. Despite being the first leg and covering the shortest distance in any triathlon, swimming has proved to be the most deadly. Upon analyzing the data of 2,971 USA triathlon sanctioned events held between January 2006 and September 2008, we found that 14 participants died, 13 of them while swimming and one while biking. Swimming in a triathlon is a totally different sport than doing some laps in the pool due to the variability of extremes of waves along with people swimming around and on top of athletes. Along with these factors, it is important to note that swimming events in triathlons are in colder temperatures than other events. There is a period of 10 to 15 minutes where the core temperature rises or stays unchanging. It is clear that the core temperature of many does not start to drop immediately. The human body needs time to adapt to such a drastic change in temperature, while studies on different athletes have yielded varying results, it has been found that you don't drop in core temperature during the first 20 minutes. Some athletes have a deflection period where their temperature doesn't drop immediately. Other athletes raise their body temperature before the swimming event to maintain their core temperature for a longer period of time. The water temperature was set at 10 degrees Celsius in Norseman. In 2015, authorities reduced the swim length to half the distance, 1900 meters, that year. It was predicted that possibly half of the starters could suffer hypothermia in 2015 if a full-length swim had taken place. A long time in cold water is one of the most significant contributors to hypothermia. Often athletes suffer from an after-drop, which is a continued cooling of the core temperature after getting out of the water. There is a continuous lowering of core temperature with varying size and time. We found that the core temperature is lowest around 15 to 30 minutes after you are out of the water. Although this wasn't applicable to all participants, most of the participants seemed to be suffering from this phenomenon. Muscles are active, which will increase internal heat production in the body, and probably more if the swimmer uses wetsuits for insulation. But there's a catch. The insulation characteristics of the muscles alter with the level of muscular activity. When the muscles become active, the muscles turn from being an insulator to a very effective heat conductor. The active muscle produces heat, but at the same time, it loses heat. And, and, you're probably losing more heat than you're gaining in the water. Various coaches of different sporting events have spoken of ways to battle the freezing waters of swimming championships. Coach Kevin Koskula is one such person. Cold water can not only be unpleasant and draining, but can also be dangerous. The coach recommends partnering up for the swim practices in cold water. The most challenging part of the triathlon swimming events is the frigid temperature, especially in the spring months of April and March. The coach says to wear two swimming caps when swimming in cold water. You lose most of your heat through your head, and doubling up your cappage helps you to keep your heat in. It also acts as insulation by keeping the heat generated from the body specifically in one place. He also recommends wearing a neoprene cap, as those are better at handling cold water than standard latex caps. We also lose lots of heat through our feet. Neoprene socks are also a good idea, but we may want to use these mostly on training swims, as they can be a hassle when it comes to transitioning to your bike if you're taking part in a full-length triathlon championship. Earplugs are also recommended for swimming in cold water.
water, athletes must wear a wetsuit, but more specifically, a full suit. The sleeveless suits allow heat to escape through your armpits. The coach learned this the hard way when doing the Alcatraz swim in 52 degree water with a sleeveless Farmer John suit. By the time he finished, he was in early stages of frostbite. Keep in mind that wetsuits are allowed in triathlons for water temperatures of 75 degrees Fahrenheit or below, according to the USA triathlon rules. Practicing swimming in cold water in the weeks before your race might also be a good idea. If you are swimming in cold water for the first time, it can be a shock to your system, resulting in hyperventilation or a panicked feeling. One should swim slowly until they catch their breath. The first time one experiences this, it can throw them off. But with practice, you will get used to it and be able to relax into your swim eventually. A warm-up in the morning before the actual event is also recommended, and it minimizes the shock effect on your muscles during the event. When the cold water hits your face, the shock causes your lungs to contract and cause breathing problems. Blow bubbles before taking off on your swim. Go waist deep into the water and submerge your face to blow bubbles. This helps alleviate the shock of the cold water. If these rules are correctly followed and athletes are given enough time to prepare themselves for the event with proper training and guidance, then try triathlon swimming might not be as intimidating as it sounds. That ends our video for today. We do hope that you liked the video, and if you did, you must hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and staying with me up until the end. We at Triathlon Global Insights keep you updated on triathlon news, incredible races, training tips, and information about pro athletes. You may like, subscribe, and press the notification bell so that you'll be updated on my next upload. Adios!